Class changes on seasonal discovery phase for PTR. Guys, I always tell you, when you feel that you have a problem in life, the best solution is to complain as much as possible. I went to every podcast I could, I went to every other people's channel, in every single Twitch chat, Reddit, wherever you can find uh, people saying something, I was there complaining about the warrior. And it turns out that that agrand in the sky has heard our prayers. All right, so it seems that the PTR is still down, which is a shame because we're not gonna be able to test out the changes, but we do have changes. Shield Slam is gonna gain 15% of attack power as additional damage. <coughs> Prot wasn't even that bad. Prot was fine, boys. This is gonna be bonkers. All right, all right, all right. So all I wanted to check is this. My Crappy pre-raid best in slotish. Okay, how much attack power do I got? 586. All right, I got 724 actually. Because uh, with attack battle shout, I got 724. That's a lot more. So 724 times 0 0.15, 108.6. So my shield slam is going to be doing 108.6, which is an upgrade of about 50% more damage, more or less 40%. So this is a huge buff. As a matter of fact, I think uh, this buff wasn't even that needed. I think Prot is just fine. We don't scale off damage or anything. Also, guys, remember that uh, Shield Slam does double threat. Okay, so the damage you generate is double. Also, remember that now we're going to scale off attack power and we're going to scale off strength block value at the same time. So this is even a little more than 15% when you're thinking about how, what, what value you get from strength, really. So this is a huge buff. I think people are gonna sleep on it, but this is a huge, huge buff. Of course, of course, guys, uh, I don't wanna break too much time on Prot right now because that's not the big change that we wanted to talk about. Of, of course, of course, the big change because the classes that were in trouble were the, the DPS warriors. Single-Minded Fury. They deleted that run of the game. The old Single-Minded Fury was... Um, was 10% more damage, right? The old single-minded fury was when you were dual wielding, you got 10% more damage. But now, um, in the PTR, they made it so you get attack, uh, sorry, movement speed, and you, you lose threat. And that was it. They put no damage on it. Now they changed their mind, okay? There is a change here. 10% uh, movement speed, so that's the old value. But 2% attack speed every time you auto-attack. And you can stack it up to five times. This reminds me of the Ginsu's blade. Remember in League of Legends, you know, like if you keep hitting the same guy, you can stack it and you get a little more attack speed every single time. You can get all the way to 10% attack speed. So this is going to make it so Fury is only very good on single target because they are going to lose all that attack speed if they are going to cleave or AOE or whatever. I am willing to live with that sacrifice. I think this is still a, a fairly big change. It is not going to be nearly as good as 10% more damage for many reasons. First of all, your Wind Fury procs, 10% uh, more damage on those is going to mean 10% more rage. You are going to get the normal rage amount if you got 10% more attack speed. But you're going to swing your weapon 10% faster, so you are going to have a pretty decent rage generation. And I can live with this change. I think this change is not going to have that many exponential problems. Yes. It is still slightly exponential. You're still gonna run into like some of the same problems the old rune had with 10% flat damage. But this is fine. This is gonna. I think this is a good idea by Agrend. Okay, we're gonna buff the rage generation. Your white swings are gonna. You're gonna get more of those. But your actual damage is not gonna be that changed. Uh, for reference, if you take a look at a, at a warrior's logs, at a good warrior's logs, not mine. Uh, temper. Sorry. 30 something to 40% of their damage is auto attacks. So if we take a look at that, we're talking like a 5%, 4% more damage increase with this. It's not huge. It's not huge at all. Except for Wind Fury procs, right? All of your rage generation is uh, the melee swing. So this sounds like not a lot, but this is actually 10% almost exactly more rage. I think that's fine. I, I think that's a damn fine change. So I don't think this is going to be quite enough to fix dual wield, mind you. I think dual wield is still going to need like one more rune at least. But this is a good change. This is a good change. Complaining works. Complaining is the way we rise up. Okay? Gamers, we are the most oppressed people in the world as gamers. And when we complain, we rise up. All of a sudden, we see change.
And I don't mean Obama changed with the four colors, you know, like there's one color of Obama in one corner, there's another color of Obama in this corner, and there's another here, like a Andy Warhol painting. No, I mean real change, okay? Things that matter, like damage of warriors in World of Warcraft. The threat reduction of single-minded fury has been removed. I mean, I don't think it's even gonna generate that much more threat than the other threat classes. Like the other DPSers are gonna be generating more threat than them, so they are not gonna be the, the problem. The threat reduction was not necessary. Also, I guess this could help the, the dual wheel tanks. I don't think dual dual wheel tanking is not going to happen. I told you before and I'm going to tell you again. Uh, the dream is over. The dual wheel tank is over. It's not going to happen. It might become a little better. Next in the list is Blizzard hating the gladiator tank. They saw that people could DPS as a, as a sword and board warrior. And some people thought, Oh, so if I got a lot of gear, I can like super scale and I can actually be a tank. I'm going to take more damage, but I'm going to be doing a lot more damage for my raid and everybody's going to be happy. And Agren said, no, I didn't intend for this to happen. I don't like it when you do things that I do not intend you to happen. So since you are not playing the exact way that I expected you to play, I am going to put rails on it. I am not gonna allow you to play in a way that is not sanctioned by Blizzard headquarters. We were getting tracked by the by the class balance. We're losing time, not for gladiator stance. Illegal use of warrior. You're absolutely right. This is an illegal congregation of warriors. This is not allowed. So we are never again gonna use gladiator stance for something that isn't exactly what they want us to play. And that means the gladiator tank is dead. As you guys know, the gladiator stance, it used to be a 10% rage deficit. It used to reduce your threat 10%, which was effectively a 40% threat reduction because defensive stance is 30% more threat, of course. So it was already pretty freaking hard to be a gladiator tank. Outside from the best freaking warriors in the game, gladiator stance was never used for tanking because it was like so hard to hold aggro, almost nobody could even do it. So there's yet another nerf aimed at stopping the gladiator. I mean, it's a buff, but it is also a nerf. So as an additional effect, Gladiator stance is going to increase your rage generation when attacking a target that is not actively attacking the warrior. So if you're taking damage, uh, if, you, if you got aggro, you're not going to get extra rage, but the gladiator is going to get extra rage. Conceptually, aside from the part where you're taking damage, it's not allowed, which is dumb. That, that, that's just stupid. You already took a... Re uh, I mean, it's not going to matter. They already took a threat away. It's not like we're going to have any aggro at all. As a matter of fact, if you got a bad tank in your raid, being a gladiator could be a great idea because you're never gonna pull aggro with them anymore. It's not gonna happen anymore. The main problem with the warrior, aside from missing half our damage, is that when you took all our damage away, we lost pretty much all our rage. Our rage generation is from damage. When phase 3 came out, I think we were talking about this with Jake from 3, basically, we understand that percentage damage modifiers are stupid and they are bad for balance and they are never gonna be balanced. We understand that. When, when I saw that they removed Consumed by Rage, Flagellation, uh, I didn't say that I think Flagellation or Consumed by Rage should be staying the same way they were. That's not what I meant. I was mad because they took away all our damage and gave us nothing. So of course I was going to be mad. What we were saying with Jake from 3 was that I think they should uh, remove the damage modifiers give us like a new ability or something to compensate, to keep us competitive. I think the best way to do it is to give us a bunch of rage, all the rage we could possibly want. So you got all the buttons, you can press every single button that you want. And in return, you tone the damage down. You can balance the, the warrior around having infinite rage. I think that would be the best of all worlds. Give us like a infinite heroic strikes and like some filler ability and everything else. It's just like no damage, just rage. Like a rune that gives you a bunch of rage. You gain 50% increased rage when you auto attack. Uh, so that's 50% more rage period. That is still not gonna compensate for the damage we are missing, I think. Another reason that I was thinking that we were saying that I think infinite rage instead of more damage would be better to balance the game 
is because it's gonna even out the playing field, okay? Like, right now, the problem we have is that your normal warrior, your average player is doing okay. The guy that is playing 80%. 90% of the way there, the difference between that guy and the top players in the world is astronomical. You're allowing those, okay? People that have every bit of money, no expense, every single piece of gear, and will like to every single global uh, perfectly. That kind of people with every world buff period, those guys are doing not 10% more damage than the 90% player. They are doing like 50% more damage because the warrior is a super exponential class. And the reason is once again, because the more damage you have, the more rage you have, which is the more da rage, the more damage, the more rage, the more damage, it is exponential. And then you become like, 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 like super, superman, superman, but, but on, on, on crack. Like, would you want to mess with superman smoking crack? No, I wouldn't. So if you give rage instead of damage, the normal player, your Medinas of the world, you know, the people that, ju that are just okay at the game, those guys are gonna do a lot more similar damage than your allowing those in the world. They are still gonna kick my butt every single time because they play perfectly, but the gap is gonna shorten a lot. And I think that's always going to be the, the number one step to fixing the warrior. I wanna see something the same for two-handed or for dual wield. I don't have anything else to do I will here, let's see. Or for dual wheel builds, I would love to see the same change. Something like that, a, a rage generation rune. You can always uh, balance the damage around it later, but the rage is the part that matters. Because also, like on a side note, it just feels like crap. Imagine if they took half your mana away, not your damage, not even your damage. Imagine if you're a mage and they took half your mana, how would you feel? Well, that's, that's what the warrior has got in this patch. So that's why warriors like me are like so molding. Next change over here. Thunderclap can hit up to 10 targets. Now, as you guys know, in your leg run, you can do Thunderclap, it's gonna do more threat, and you can use it on defensive stance, and it's gonna do more damage. And the other rune was Consumed by Rage. Consumed by Rage, looking at these patch notes, it is still Vanish of Existence. Agrend still deleted that rune. It's, sho it's showing up in my, in my runes, but it doesn't do anything. It, it literally doesn't do anything. That rune uh, is, is just like for show. It's just to have an icon on your runes. With improved Thunderclap, it's gonna be the way to go. As, of course, we're talking tanks here. Uh, Thunderclap is already part of my rotation as a tank because it does decent threat and it's nice. I gotta keep the buff on it anyway. And now it's gonna be a really good AoE on top of our new AoE over... Uh, sorry. Shockwave, so we got two AoEs now, that's gonna change a little bit. But honestly, if you're taking that rune, because why, what else would you take? Frenzy Assault, that's a decent 200 DPS rune. But okay, if you're a dual wielder, consumed by rage is useless. It doesn't do anything anymore. It just gives you raging blow, that's it. But here, Furious Thunder, that's your only real option. If you're two, uh, two handed, you're still gonna be using this. This is insane. 100% more damage. And now it is gonna do 10 targets. You're gonna be doing like Whirlwind and Cleave, and if you get extra rage, you can dump it on Thunderclap. I, that might be very good. Of course, for a tank is even better. AoE threat is great. And this is intended for tanks, obviously. But still, I like this. Okay, this is the big one. Dun, ta -da 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 -dun, ta -da 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 totally, 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 totally. Uh, there we go. It is so big that Wowhead made an, uh, a new article for it, guys. <laughs> this is retail plus. This is seasonal retail, yes. Seasonal retail. Welcome to seasonal retail. Warriors are gonna get a new buff. That's the big change that Wowhead made an entire article about because they were so, so excited to see it. We are gonna get a weaker version of Onyxia's buff. The original Onyxia buff is 10% critical strike and 5% uh, critical strike for melee, 10% for caster, and 140 attack power. And we are getting half of that. We're getting 90 attack power, a little more than half, okay. And 5% melee crit. Wait. Wait. Oh! Okay, we are getting the same melee crit as the, the good Onyxia. We are not getting 5% less... We're getting 5% less spell crit. I am not a caster. And we are getting 30 less attack power. So we are essentially getting Onyxia for free. This and the normal Onyxia is pretty much the same thing for melee. So this means that we can bring basically the same buff for ourselves. So we are never going to be 
both as naked and if you take a look at the reasoning I, I like this reasoning because warriors in particular gain a massive amount of damage power from world buffs and the class can feel a lot less satisfying to play without them so this will not raise the warriors overall damage because it is the same buff it's not gonna stack that's what he means but it should bring the floor of the people that, that wipe or the people that don't get the buff or whatever with the people that do. They are already threatening to take it away. I'm scared. But this is great because in progression, warriors are the class that gets shafted the most. When you're progressing through a boss, all right, raid is new, day one, everybody goes there and we wipe and we wipe and we wipe. It sucks for the warrior because you're basically, you go from the strongest class in the game to the weakest. Without world buffs, the warrior loses a bunch of his race generation for the same reasons we explained a thousand times today. So wiping affects them the most and this thing will make it so wiping doesn't suck anymore. I like that. I think this is great. I want to bring a shout out to Hammerdance. Like I told you guys, I told you many times before, complaining is the way to get ahead in life. Hammerdance went to Agri and I told him, can we get wall buffs? The warrior doesn't feel good with wall buffs. We cannot even test our class because we do not have any wall buffs. There may very well be a, a case here that that tweet of, uh, of Hammerdance tweeting to Agri and uh, can we get wall buffs? Actually did like a, like a click in his brain and it went like, you know, Jimmy Neutron where he does like, and, and like in the brain it goes like, I think Agren planted the seed of something great in Agren's mind. Blessings to you, my brother. Overall, dual wielding is still not gonna be great. Two-handed still looks like the way to go. Two-handed fury may still be very good. I don't think two-handed fury is gonna be too bad, even though it's not gonna be top tier anymore, of course. But this is a good change. It, this means that they are listening, and that's all we wanted, okay? That's all we wanted. That them showed uh, as a little sign of okay we are listening to you guys we are trying our best so I, i'm gonna give them shout out to agren credit where credit is due prod warrior is saved i want to say that right away so you don't panic the prod warrior is definitely gonna be a very strong tank we got every five minutes a shield wall and we got an insanely strong shield slam you know double threat on 15 percent attack power scaling we are never losing aggro with vigilance on us Prot Warrior deep, Prot Warrior is the way to go, we're gonna kick some butt. Are you okay with this new stance dance nonsense? I would rather have them allowed overpower in Berserken stance. I, I, I theory crafted the damage nerfs, but if I must be honest with you, man, I haven't even thought what the Warrior spec is gonna be for DPS. I did the Prot because I play Prot. Let's take a look, we're gonna theory craft right now, live. Okay, I think we're not gonna go arms. Even back in Vanilla Classic, nobody went arms. And the reason for that is very simple math, okay? Oh my god, I got so many windows! How does Asmongold stream with 70 tabs open? I'm going insane already. So, Blood Tearst is 45% of your attack power. But Mortal Strike is, uh, let's see, your attack power divided by 14 times the weapon speed, which is 3.8. Mortal Strike is 27% of your attack power. Of course, your weapon damage, your base weapon damage is going to be higher because it's a two-hander, fine. But Blood Thirst is 45% of your attack power. So we are talking almost a double the attack power scaling on Blood Thirst. So Arms was, Arms was never going to be the, the DPS spec for PvE. Even in two-handed, Blood Thirst does way more damage. And it's still going to do way more damage because we're getting better gear. So... We're getting an updated set from Molten Core and stuff like that, so Fury is going to be the way to go. We're going to be taking fresh meat. When your rend ability causes damage, your overpower is going to activate for 9 seconds or 1 attack. This effect will not occur uh, every more than 6 seconds. Okay, this is a bit of a problem. Now I see what you mean. We are going to have to overpower every 6 seconds. So, yeah, because arms here. Overpower, improved... Over can you go over improved overpower if you go deep fury? Yes, you, you can, of course you can. So here, okay, we're gonna take rend because we're gonna be rending. We're gonna take tactical mastery for the stance dancing because we are gonna stance dance, obviously. Anger management for ray generation. Oh, here, improved overpower, I'm stupid. Deep wounds and I wanna get impale. That's my main, okay. And we can even take two points here. All right. So this is a two-handed fury spec. Now we are gonna have to overpower right here. As you see, 50% crit. Uh, Jake from 3 was saying that the warrior is gonna have about 44% crit this phase. So this is a 94% crit, effectively uh, a free crit. More or less is almost guaranteed. 
act to crit this thing, so we have to overpower every time we can. And here in Pale it is 20% more damage bonus. So this is the scaling of overpower too, because this, it is just weapon damage, right? Same thing, 27% of your attack power. It is 27% times 2.2, because it is 100 crit bonus plus 20% bonus from the impale so this means our scaling is gonna be 59.4% so your overpower is gonna do way more damage than bloodthirst we're gonna have to overpower every time no question about it it would help a lot to the damage if we could have overpower on berserker stance because if, if I look at this that we're seeing right now that we're gonna we're gonna be forced to do overpower uh, you're gonna get overpowers for free constantly every every six seconds why would he be in the in berserker stance will win this a terrible it's your worst ability battle stance is free overpower you can still use your bloodthirst every single part of your kit is gonna work just fine but you have three percent less crit if you take precise timing you get a very effective way of dumping your rage because precise timing the slam is going to be essentially the same as as will wind it is just a weapon weapon damage as an ability the only reason i would i would be in 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 berserker stance and do will wind at this point is to cleave yes exactly that's the only reason i see for it why would i go berserker stance and dump all my rage like granted if you're insane at the game okay Okay, if you're insane at the game, sure, sure. Of course, you want to go there uh, and go do the stance dancing when you can, when you are low on rage, that's where I would do it, okay? If you're like under 25 rage, uh, so you can go to Berserker without losing your rage, it might make sense to go uh, Berserker range, Berserker stance and do a will win and then go, going back to battle stance. You're going to stand in, in, in battle stance forever and all you lose is 3% crit and you're going to have a lot more rage, you're going to have all the same abilities, your uh, your rage dump, uh, you're going to have a slam, which is essentially the same thing, and you got a, a perfect way to dump your rage with it. You can have pretty much free heroic strikes forever because of all the new rage generation crap. Why would I ever go berserker stance? I think we're not going to we're not gonna stance dance at all. Unless we are talking about the one percenters, you know, the people that want to hit that perfect parse, the best of the best of the best warriors. It is not worth it. It's not worth it. These are good changes. I got hope here. Hope is is hard to come by in this in this cold earth of ours that God has forsaken. Subscribe, leave a like, join the Discord, and thank you for watching.